All right, again, we want to say a good evening to everyone who've logged on. Those who are viewing us Facebook Live, YouTube Live, go ahead now, please, and just copy this link. Share this link with some of your, your friends, your, your, your fellow church, church, church goers, family members. I believe this is a platform where any and everybody can be blessed because it's strictly a Bible based. Now, again, friends, we have been, we have established a series of lessons called the present truth. And these are another studies you can use. The thing that makes ours a total game changer is this. Number one, it is, um, it's live. So it's almost like a coach coachy session, right? That's what we're doing really. And so you can go back and view the videos at a later date, download them. Number two, we make the PowerPoints available. We're giving the PowerPoints away. We're not selling the series, right? Number three, you get the master guide and you also get your you also get the student guide right we're also working to put this in a manual get it in a workbook manual all the lessons um you know so so you'll have your own personal master copy guide for yourself right but then also we now want you to take this and go teach it um and that's why we've taken this approach where we're actually just going through the, reviewing the study guides now the lessons have been e emailed out if you don't have you haven't printed it yet go ahead and just jot the answers down on a piece of paper and as you print out your lesson you can um fill in the blanks and again if you do desire to receive a binder which we hope you invest in a binder reach out to us and we'll definitely get one shipped out to you now friends the present truth is it biblical yes second peter 121 peter says wherefore i will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things know you though you know them and that you be established you know what kind of truth the present truth so the present truth is not it is biblical it's not nothing fanatical now it's not the present truth as in a truth it is a series of truth that god has given to the seven Adventist church to be disseminated and scattered throughout the world when you think present truth you think civil day adventism as a matter of fact a friend of mine called me and he said not he said not um i i i i know you you are a you're a, you're a part of present truth what is present truth and i'm like what, what do you mean i said present truth first of all it was the first it was that james white was the first one who, who gave it that name um it was one of our first publication and present truth is nothing more than the doctrines, the truths that God has given to the Seventh Adventist Church to give to the world. He said, really? I said, yes. I said, the Sabbath is present truth. The Second Coming is present truth. Death, the millennium, all these are present truth. Now, I, unfortunately, people, when they think of present truth, they think, you know, offshoots and, and you know, troublers of Israel and all these, you know, titles that we label people with. But present truth is really the seventh day of his message. Present truth was a publication that James White established. And the first subject that came out in that publication was the Sabbath. That's what it is. Nothing more than the truths for this time, the truths for this dispensation, right? Now, again, we've discussed that when we, when we do present truth, they have to have order. You, don't just, you just don't give lessons randomly and arbitrarily link after link in the prophetic chain and you because each message will strengthen the succeeding and the preceding message now when last we left off we looked at um i forgot that lesson name lesson 26 um a, so a call to a higher standard i think it was right and so we've also discussed now that at some point you will transition to christian standards right and we've covered that you can go back and watch it now the next lesson is lesson 27 this one is entitled the mystic mark the mystic mark and again this is nothing more than the mark of the beast now do you see where the mark of the beast is the mark of the beast is way way down almost at the end of the series now every all of our lessons has an objective and we like we like to print the objective to make sure as you embark upon this initiative you have your you have a compass right this is the objective, right? Number one, to identify what the mark of the beast is and who and, 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 and how we can avoid receiving it, right? How we can avoid receiving. That, that's the whole objective. We're going to identify what the mark of the beast is and how to avoid receiving it. Now, first and foremost, it's good to begin the lesson by just seeking to identify 
what some of the common definitions of what the mark of the beast is. Some may say it's a chip or it's good at this time to engage your student. Tom, what do you think the mark of the beast is? Or, or what's trending out there? And then you'll get various answers. But then, so you're kind of setting the stage for what's out there because you want to bring to a light, bring to light the Bible's definition of what the mark of the beast is, right? So some will say it's a chip, some say it's a vaccine, some say it's a barcode. Now it is true, barcodes <coughs> and chips may help to regulate the mark of the beast system, but these things are not the mark of the beast by themselves. So it's good to seek to get your get your student to 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 to, to um to you know bring to the front what they think the mark of the beast is. Right now, before you cover this lesson. It's good, and again, even if you've just logged on, before you cover the mark of the beast, it's always good, number one, to cover Daniel 2. And we've covered that, the, the ancient, uh, king, uh, ancient king's dream, and we looked at the, the, the metallic image, right? Once you've covered Daniel 2, then the next lesson you must cover before the mark of the beast is Daniel chapter 7. And this is 7a, 7b, 7c, the change of the Sabbath. And we looked at Daniel chapter 7, where Daniel said he saw the lion, the leopard, the bear, and the uh, uh, iron beast, right? And we've covered these nations, Babylon, Mesia, Persia, Greece, Rome. And then a little horn was to arise out of that, um, the pagan Rome. And that, that little horn would do several things, right? And I, we have identified the little horn as the, pap the papal church. We would have covered this already. Because if you do not cover these lessons, um, Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 2, you're, you'll get lost and your student will be confused. And again, our job is not to add to the confusion. Our job is to disseminate, rather to scatter, to dissolve, to, 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 to disband, right? Confusion, right? right? Now again, at this time, now we're going to transition into our study. Now remember, we have an introduction. You can either, at this time, you should have been comfortable with your student, you can either read it or you can ask your partner to read it or you can read it, right? And we're going to ask Sister Nott to, to read and get her voice on the mic, all right? Go ahead now, please. Uh -huh. The Mark of the Beast is one of the most misinterpreted prophecies in all of the Bible. Yet, it is vitally important to understand it. Is it a tattooed number? a computer chip under the skin, or something subtler, regardless of what it is or is not, we are commend by God not to receive this mark. In this lesson, we will seek to unravel the mystical mark and how to avoid receiving it. All right, that's a type of commanded. We will get that change, right? We're commanded not to receive the mark. So here you have some, some insights as to what it's trending. You can use these talking points, right? Maybe is it a tattooed mark? Is it a computer chip? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. These are what the average person, the average Joe, think the mark of the beast is. Now, friends, let's think about it now. The mark of the beast is comprised of two words. The beast and his mark. That's what the study is. The beast and his mark. So we're going to break it up into two parts. First, we're going to identify the beast, and then we're going to identify what is his mark? Very, very simple. Right now, question number one says now, in regards, regardless of what the mark of the beast is or is not, what is in store for those who receive it? Right? In Revelation 13, 14, the Bible says, and a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So based on this text, they will suffer the effects of the seven last plagues. That is what is in store for anyone who receives the mark of the beast. That you cannot gainsay. You can't debate that. Irregardless of what it is or is not, anyone who receives it will suffer the effects of the seven last plagues. Now note, please read on those who receive. Those who receive the mark of the beast 
will be in good standing with the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. They will be able to buy, sell, and prosper in the earth for a short time, a season. However, they will have a major problem in their relationship with God. And so emphasize this. All those who receive the mark of the beast, yes, they would, they would receive privileges, but it's only for a season. And how long is a season? Remember, it's three months. Remember what Paul said in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, that Mo Moses, when he, had, when he had come to years, he refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter, and to rather to suffer affliction of the people of God than to enjoy sin for a season. Friends, so friends, those who receive the mark of the beast, whatever privileges they have, whatever, whatever rights are granted them by the system, it's only for a season. And they would have sold their soul for a season in regards to eternity. Emphasize these points, right? Now, Please read now, according to the mark, according to the mark of the beast. Accepting the mm -hmm. mark of the beast is a complete and utter denial of Christ, his revealed truth, his power to save, his divinity as the son of the most high God, and a complete rejection of the sacrifice that he made in his own precious blood to pay for the sins of the world, yours and mine. All right. Accepting the mark of the beast is an admission that you place more value upon the things and relationships of this world than you do upon an eternity with Christ and the God and God the Father. All right. This is why we're told to endure even unto death, because once the mark is received, uh, received we have given ownership of souls in, unto Satan. We have submitted ourselves to his rule, and by, by, by our, own, our own choice, we have accepted the damnation of the choice uh, of our own free will. And so, friends, once you receive the mark of the beast, you can't rescind it. You can't say, okay, I'm sorry, oops. Um, and by the time the mark of the beast is, uh, would, have been, would have come into play, and you're going to see next week, that th the world would have been enlightened in regards to what the mark, what the mark of the beast is, Right? All right, so we want to let them know that this is a serious issue. If you receive the mark of the beast, um, you will receive the seven last plagues, right? Number two now. Now, what religious system does the leopard beast represent? Now, we're in Revelation 13, and there are two beasts, but the primary one, the, 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 the former, is the leopard-like beast. Now, friends, we believe, we believe, and we're going to prove this, that the leopard like beast of Revelation 13 represents the Roman Catholic Church system. Now, at this point, maybe your student may be a Catholic, um, you know, uh, whatever his affiliation may be. Maybe he or she will be a Pope lover. And so you want to understand that we're not dealing with people. We're dealing with systems. And you want to emphasize the fact that in every communion, God has faithful people there, right? And just because you're a Catholic, does not mean automatically you're damned for salvation. You have to emphasize these points because, again, this is a rough truth. If you were preaching this in the dark ages, you'd be darked out. You'd be dead. People have lost their lives in the dark ages for a lesser doctrine than this, right? And only by the mercies of God that as a church, we are able to still preach and teach this without being molested, right? So we're dealing with system. God loves the sinner, but God hates the sin. The system is not led by God, but God has people that are lodged or dislodged in these systems. So you want to bring these points out right now. In order to know what the mark of the beast is, we must first identify the beast. And how does the Bible describe it? Now, at this time now, you're going to transition to Revelation chapter 13. You can either have your student read Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 10, just to be familiar, or you can do that, or you can either just tag along as the text, um, right, as it, the, the slides open. So Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 10 is where the leopard-like beast comes into play. Now, this is what you want to get now. Follow me now. The leopard beast represents the same power as the little horn of Daniel. 
The beast introduced in Revelation 13 is simply another name for the Antichrist, which we learned from Daniel 7, is the papacy. So you see why Daniel 7 is important. Now, by the time you would have covered Daniel 7, you would have riveted in your student mind who the little horn is, historically, linguistically, hermeneutically, exegetically, um, and all the other ethicalists, right? You would have identified that little horn. And so we believe now that the leopard light beast in Revelation 13, 1 through 10, is same as the little horn in Daniel 7, verse 8, and in also in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. The little horn, again, represents the Roman Catholic Church. Now, we would have covered this part in earlier lessons, but we have sought to just um, put back these slides, not in a handout, in the lesson so you can bring your student up to par. We have discovered... That when it comes on that the little horn is the Roman Catholic Church in Daniel 7, 8, 25. And this is not just an Adventist thing. Remember we did this? That we actually um, looked into most of the mainstream um, commenters, commentators. These were not just charlatans. These were people who are renowned for their commentary on the Bible. The Methodists, Adam Clark, the uh, Christ, uh, Church of Christ, Alexander Campbell, the Baptist, John Darwin, uh, Church of England, Dr. Scott, Dr. Schwartz, and the Presbyterian Albert Barnes, right? I've used Dr. Adams Clark and Albert Barnes commentary in sermon preparation, right? And when you read these men's views of Daniel 7, verse 8 and 25, all of these men have come to the same um the same, the same, what's the word? I'm same what? Same conclusion, same answer that that little horn represents the Roman Catholic Church. This is not a biased thing. This is not an Adventist thing. This is a real bona fide cogent Christian thing, right? And again, the leopard beast, all right? Right? The leopard beast. Same thing. Okay, let, let's just look at, look, look at some of them, right? Leopard beast, the little horn. Daniel said, right? Oh, here it is, right? Right? What he would do, I'm sorry, he would speak great words against the Most High. Are we there? You got it? And he will wear out the sins of the Most High, and he will change, he will think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hands for time, times, and divided at times. Again, all of these men. <coughs> this is what, pardon me, what Dr. Um, Adam Clark said, the Methodist. Among Protestant writers, this is considered to be the little, the, the, the popendom. Pope them. That's what the, um, Dr. Adam Clark said about the little horn, right? Um, one more, Alexander Campbell, the, the, the Methodist, he says, The Church of Christ, I positively affirm these items never met any king, state, or empire save the papal room. Over and over, right? I'm just giving you a, 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 a recap, right? And then we have John Darwin, the Baptist, the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. These two passages alone complete a prophetic picture of the papal antichrist. Friends, over and over, all of these um, comment commentators agree. And then we have Albert Barnes, the Presbyterian. The papacy is well represented by the little horn. So over and over, we've identified the little horn in Daniel 7, 25, 8 as the papacy. And again, what the devil, what the papacy has done they have concocted a, a, a facade, a bogus, right, conclusion of who the little horn is. They said it was Antiochus Epiphany. As a matter of fact, you know, I may do that study on Antiochus Epiphany and show you why he could not be the little horn. Of the, I may do it. I may just do it. Don't thou shalt not tempt. I may do it, right? I may do it one of these Sundays. We just look at it just for our own education, right? So you want to identify the fact, right? That the, that, that, that the leopard light beast is the same as the little horn in Daniel 7, 8, and 25. Now, so we're going to dive now into Revelation 13, and we're going to highlight certain key words that John used to describe the leopard light beast and see how they find their fulfillment in the papacy. Remember, the mark of the beast is two words. If we, we want to find who the, mark, who the beast is and who the mark is. We're going to focus this study on identifying who is the beast of whose mark we're told not to receive in our forehead or in our eye. Because if we do that, we will suffer the wrath of God. All right, question three says now.
In order to know what the mark of the beast is, we must first identify the beast and how does the Bible describe it. Now, so again, remember, brothers and sisters, I know for some of you, you're saying, not this is too elementary. I'm way advanced. I know you are. You're super advanced, and this is an insult to your intelligence. But remember, the people who, are, who we are administering these lessons to have never heard of this. This is like talking Chinese to them or Mandarin, literally. They have never heard this. They, they think the beast is some real beast. So these lessons are really tailored for basic school, non seventh day Adventists. This is like as low as it gets, right? But remember, even in our prof in, even in our simplicity, there's great profundity. And as Mrs. Spurgeon says, just because I only use ABC, it doesn't mean I don't know X, Y, Z. Our job is to communicate as simple as we can. We want the people to make an intelligent decision, not a decision based on impulse. Are you with me? This message appeals to the intellect, and I've oftentimes said it. No fool can be a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. We get you thinking before we get you shouting. All right? All right, now, so we're going to identify 11 points briefly now. Again, you may not go through all 11, and guess what? You're not in a rush. You don't have any quotum to, to, to fill, right? You don't have to get them baptized within the next, next, next two days. So if you only get through three points, then so be it. If you only get through two, so be it. Don't rush. Remember, you're going to keep your Bible studies restricted to about half an hour. Right? No more than that. Right? So the first point we want, we want them to fill in is this now. Right? And again, friends, if you do have any questions, you know, I know, unfortunately, people are saying, now, why don't you, why don't you take a Zoom, a Zoom platform? Because in the Zoom, people can ask questions. Um, and I may consider that the thing with the Zoom, the quality of Zoom is not really that good. And we're trying to get these, you know, high quality video. We're shooting in 4K. You know, we, 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 when you go Zoom, the quality kind of, you, you compromise the quality. And we want to get these out. But again, if you do have a question um, and you can articulate it, put it in a chat group. I'll do my best to answer it. If you have a, if you have a comment, uh, Sister Nana and myself will definitely try to re-echo your thoughts. So we're all blessed, right? And also on Facebook, right? Um, but we have to monitor Facebook also, right? To get that. So maybe you want to switch over on platforms and see, all right? All right. So 11 points. That, that, that incriminate the, this beast as the Catholic Church, the leopard like beast. Number one, the beast came out of the sea. So we're feeling that it came out of the sea. It came out of the sea. The beast came out of the sea. Revelation 13 says, And I stood upon the sands of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Right? Important. The beast didn't come out of the earth. Right? Remember, a beast is kingdom. No, the little horn. Watch it now. The little horn came up among the ten kingdoms of Europe. The leopard beast comes up out of the sea, which means it arose among many peoples. Thus, the two corresponds here. Sea or waters in prophecy refer to people or a populated area. We have covered this early on in our lessons, right? So this leopard beast, this kingdom, this religious power, when it came on the scene, there were other kingdoms and nations there and that is why the little horn it uprooted three kingdoms the Hostrogoths, the Vishagoths, and the vandals because again when it came on the scene there were other nations dominating the area right no so the leopard beast would arise amid established nations of them of the, the then known world, the papacy arose or arose in the Western Europe, so it fits to this point. There's only one. There's only one, just that little horn. All right, number two now, right? Um, it is a composite of the four beasts of Daniel chapter 7. When you see the leopard light beast, that is why if you would have never covered Daniel chapter 7 or Daniel 2, Right now, you'll be totally confused and totally lost because you're going to have to now sacrifice and compromise this lesson to go back and to cover Daniel chapter 7, which we do not recommend it, right? Okay, let's read it now. Verse 2 says now again, The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, the feet of a bear, and the mouth of a, of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. So friends, here we see now, Daniel is, look, Daniel is looking back. 
And looking, John is looking back to Daniel. Daniel saw this leopard-like beast, but he is a composite beast. He has amalgamated. So he has features of the lion, the bear, the leopard, and, 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 and the leopard, right? Now, the reason why you, he doesn't find the iron beast because he was living in the iron beast, right? And so here we see that now. Now, at this point, you should have known why Daniel, why John picked certain features of these other beasts in Daniel chapter 7. So you want to talk about them, right? The feet of the bear. Who was the bear? Who does the bear sit on Daniel chapter 7? Medo-Persia. What were Medo-Persia no notorious for? They made revocable laws. Medo-Persia would persecute God's people. It was Medo-Persia that placed Daniel in the lion's den. We've covered this, right? So, 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 so this is an incriminating piece of this beast. It is very cruel. A bear is cruel. Listen, you know what they say? You, you heard the story. I think I've told it already. Two, two guys were out, was out hunting and they, and, they, and, and, and they encountered a bear. So one said to the other, we, let's run. And, and one said, man, we can't outrun a bear. And he said, that's true. I could outrun you. <laughs> right? And so they tell you, if you're out in the woods, right, and you encounter a bear, you can't outrun a bear. And you can't climb a tree. Right? Because they can climb trees. What do you do? You drop, play dead, and you curl up. Right? But because the bear is cruel, one hit with your paw can rupture arteries and rupture veins. Right? So it would tell you that, that the leopard-like beast, the Catholic Church, is a very cruel system. Right? It had the body of a leopard. The leopard, this brings us back to Greece. The leopard-like beast. Four heads, his four general. And in 1 Corinthians, right? One of the most dominating part, the dominating part of the of of, of, of the Greeks, of the Greeks was this. What, 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 what were the Greeks known for? Well, Hellenization. The Greeks were known for wisdom. Here's a good text, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Paul says, For the Jew require a sign, but the Greeks seek after wisdom. So the Greeks were known for um, their wisdom, worldly wisdom, Aristotle. Aristides, Chrysides, Socrates, Philistides, all these other Ds, right? And these men were, you know, they were renowned men. And by the way, this is where the Jews went wrong. When they went down to Alexandria, the same library, they were pollinated. And when they came back to Jerusalem, they came back wearing long robes and words like rabbi. The word rabbi is not a Hebrew word. It's a Greek word, rabboni. And we are told the schools had gotten so Hellenized that John the Baptist couldn't go. And, and Jesus, you know, he was homeschooled. And as a matter of fact, he got to a point where Dr. Mears said the priest, when the, when the Greeks were having their games in Jerusalem, that the priest would shut the temple down and say, hold on, we have a little break. We're going to watch some, watch some games. It's like a fire department having operating hours. <laughs> like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So what happens now is that when we think of Greek, Leopard, the leopard light beast, Revelation 13, we think of the education system of the Catholic Church. I told the church is almost every school in Jamaica is Catholic. St. Andrew's, Holy Childhood, Immaculate, good mercy. Right? Catholic Church is not a clumsy system. These men know what they're talking about. And the strongest part of the church is not the persecuting part. It is the education. And I'm going to tell you something. The condition we are in as a people today is largely because of, the, of, of Greece. We have gone down to these seminaries. And as a, as a matter of fact, be honest, you know, the more degrees we put out, is the, more, the more liberal we are. As, and, 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 you know, as, as, as one, studies, one studies have shown in Jamaica, we were, remember the UD, we were, we were reviewing the stats, so not that the more, the more educated Jamaicans get is the poor their eating habits get. And it's so true because you go to, it was a stats. I was, I, I was taken back. Because what happened now, you go to these schools, you get this degree, you come back to Jamaica, you're working in the city. Long hours on the go, you start eating like the Americans now. Grab fast food, pizza, and so you don't have time. You come home and you, 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 you got to unwind. And how do you unwind? You cut your Netflix on and you watch. This is in Jamaica. And so your, 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 your lifestyle is pining away. So, as it is in the physical, the more educated we become as a church is the more, and look at the people who are questioning our doctrines. Have you been on Facebook lately? 
Have you seen some of these, these asinine posts, especially with the issue of, of, of uh, glass of lily the other day that, that broke out in our camp meetings? You'd be surprised how many people with master degrees who have gone to our schools are justifying that as right. These, they, they've, they've, they've gone stone crazy. They've really lost their mind and their marbles. But again, it's that Greek education system has messed up their mind. And Paul said that much learning has made the man. And friends, I'm telling you that education should be a blessing. It's one of the greatest curses they have in this church. I've gone off time. You don't want to say that in your study, right? I'm just venting. It's a reality. It's a reality, saints. It's a reality. So emphasize the fact that the leopard meant that the, it, this is an educated system, right? And then the mount of a lion. Who is that? That lion symbolized Babylon. Babylon were known for paganism. Babylon, were, they worshipped the gods of wood, stone, silver, and everything. The Babylonians. And so as the Catholic Church teaches, everything she teaches is paganism. Um, Alexander Hislop says, what? Don't you know that popery is baptized paganism? They have been immersed in paganism. Emphasize these points, right? Right, and again, we have a chart for you. You see it. Daniel chapter 7, the Babylon. Revelation 13, Mount of a Lion. Daniel 7, Meet of Persia. Revelation 13, verse 2, Feet of a Bear. Greece, Leopard. Rome, Ten Horns, having ten, um, ten Horn Beasts, having Ten Horns. You see the replica. It's one um, amalgamated composite, composite beast, right? Composite beast, right? Com composite beast, right? Now, please read something. The four beasts of Daniel 7. The four beasts of Daniel 7 are depicted as part of Antichrist, or the leopard beast, because the papacy incorporated pagan beliefs and practices from all four empires. She clothed them in spiritual garb and spread them to the world as Christian teachings. There it is, saints. We want to identify who this beast is. You got to identify the beast, because if once you identify the beast now, that's half the, you have the battle. Now we got to find what's his mark. Right? right? Number four now, ABC number three, right? The dragon gave him its power and great authority. This is important. The text says now, Revelation 13, verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, feet of a bear, and the mouth of a dragon. And the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. The dragon. Now, in the, in the primary sense, we know the dragon represents Satan. Right? But the dragon can also symbolize nations, powers that Satan uses to, um, that, that, that Satan uses or, or work through, right? Let me give you, let me give you a Bible text, right? Uh, in the book of Ezekiel, is it Ezekiel or Exodus? Hmm. All right, Ezekiel 29. Ezekiel 29, the dragon in this case, yes, it is Satan, but Satan, work, work, Satan works through uh, another earthly power, right? Here's another text you can use. Ezekiel 29. Look how Ezekiel compares Pharaoh to. Ezekiel says, 29 verse 1, In the tenth year, in the tenth year, in the tenth month, in the twelfth day, skip around to verse 2, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt, speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon. So here we see, and Pharaoh, Egypt was used by the devil to pursue God's people. Right? So here the Bible says now, Egypt was likened unto a dragon, a persecuting power. Right? Now when the Bible says the dragon here, it is Satan in the primary sense, but the dragon here represents pagan Rome. Right? The Caesars. No, this is what a history book says. Please read now. Papal Rome took the rulership following pagan Rome. A Roman Catholic writes, Long ages ago, when Rome, through the neglect of the Western emperors, was left to the mercy of the barbarous hordes, the Romans turned to one figure for aid and protection and asked him to rule over them, mm -hmm. and thus commenced the temporal sovereignty of the popes. All right, the article says, a what? And meekly? And meekly step into the throne of Caesar, the vicar of Christ took up the scepter to which the emperors and kings of Europe were to bow in reverence 
through so many ages. There it is. The dragon gave him his power, right? And the text says now the dragon gave him his seat. He gave him power and seat. Now look at the seat now. The word seat means the seat of government. The word see used in the Holy See means the same. There the Pope sits today in the city of Rome, the seat of ancient pagan emperor, pagan Rome, gave paper Rome its seat or its see. Here it is, the power, right? Only the Catholic Church fits this description, right? Number four now, it received a deadly wound. This kingdom, the Bible says in Revelation um, 13 verses 3 and verses um, 10 now, and one of his head was wounded unto death, right? And his deadly wound healed it, right? Verse 10 says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So, you call it karma, we call it you reap what you sow, right? That, that's what it is, right? You reap what you sow, right? And so, here's a system that led many into captivity, that persecuted many by the sword, right? So now God decided to pay the to pay them back, right? And we know that 1798 is a, 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 a important date in the history of prophecy. Now it's really it should really be 1790, 1799, but I don't know why we stop at 1798, right? But because of when he was he was taken captive, but this date helps to uh, solidify the deadly wound that he received and the captivity it went into, right? Please read now the deadly wound. The deadly wound was inflicted when Napoleon's general, Alexander Berthier, entered Rome and took Pope Pius VI captive in February of, 19, of 1798. All right, but, he, but look what happened now, right? Napoleon... Napoleon decreed that at the death of the Pope, the papacy would be discontinued. The Pope died in France in August of 1799. We don't talk about that. We just talk about 1798, but he, I mean, because he was taken captive, but the death, I guess it was for the final nail in the coffin. You know, we, we don't want to go into too much semantics, right? But again, you see what happened. This is what, this is the fulfillment of what happened. Again, friends, remember, for you, this is like commonplace, but for them, they haven't heard this. This is what will be taught you in a loud cry. This, this is what it is. This is reality. You have to identify that beast, right? Please read now. Half Europe. All right. Half Europe thought that without the Pope, the papacy was dead. So this point also fits the papacy. Identifying who the leopard light beast in, it, in its simplified form, right? All right. See now, its deadly wound was healed. So there will be a resurgency. This wouldn't be the final end. There will be a resurgency of the deadly wound, right? And we have an article here. We see the Pope and we see Muslim. But look what happens now, right? Look at the backdrop behind this picture, right? Please read now. But the deadly wound was to be healed. In 1929, the Italian government recognized Vatican City as an independent state. The Pope was again king. On March 9th, 1929, the Pope said, The peoples of the entire world are with us. Today, the papacy is coming back into great power. All right, so we believe that in, in 1929, the healing it, it, it commenced, but it hasn't concluded yet. We believe that it will be finished when the mark of the beast comes into power and the Catholic Church once again reign whole total so it's been healed it's been, and you're gonna you're seeing it please read now right since it's healing since it's healing the strength of the papacy has grown today she is one of the most powerful religious political organizations and influence centers in the world he is the most well-known person in our world People of the world see him as a strong moral leader. Mm -hmm. Thousands of Catholics and non-Catholics throng to him when he visits other countries. In 2015, he spoke before a joint session of the U.S. Congress for the first time in history. All right. And then you can probably pull pictures of that and put in the, in, and put in the presentation. Okay, we want to give you a room to work. We don't want to put you in a straitjacket, right? But also, remember, friends, at this point now, remember... You want to tread very softly because, again, he is still a well-renowned figure and you may be giving this to the Catholics. You want to emphasize the fact 
right? That God loves the sinner, but God hates the sin. So God loves the Pope, but God doesn't like some of the things that the Pope are doing. You have to emphasize that because the Pope can be saved. The Bible says all manner of sins and blasphemy shall be forgiven thee. Right? So as long as there's life, there is hope, right? And again, bear in mind, you have to be very careful how you teach this. Remember, Jesus was never offensive, yet many was offended. And that's the approach I want to take, right? I don't want to be offensive when I'm teaching this and dogmatic. I want it to be done in tact and grace and hope, right? Because you never know who may be in your audience, right? And so forth, right? So just, just, a, just a word of, a word of um, caution, right? All right. Go ahead now. It's not, uh huh. About the papacy, an American ambassador has said the Vatican is unmatched as a listening post. Mm. Papal structure is already prepared for worldwide control. All right. So again, these are some identifying parts, right? Um, uh, um, F now, it would be it 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 is it is a strong political power, very very strong, very very strong, right? Revelation thirteen three says. Right? And all the world wandered after the beast. Right? That, that, that is some pull. That is some pull. Right? Verse 7 says, And it was given unto him to make war and to overcome. Right? And power. So again, this is not a clumsy system. It is a well-knit, clandestine system set up. Um, it's not helter-skelter. They, they, they are, as a matter of fact, we're told in Greek controversy that the Catholic Church is a very prudent system. The eyes, we cover this in Daniel chapter 7, the eyes are our prudence, our forethought. Uh, don't let those funny glasses fool you. They, they know exactly what they're very, and, they're, and, and we're told that the Catholic Church is where she is helpless, she is tolerant. Right? And that's profound, right? All right? G, it is a strong religious power. So it's very, very political, but it's also strong. How strong is it? The text says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. This is a convincing power. And we know, the Bible says, this: the mark of the beast will initiate in America. Right? But then like cancer, <coughs> if it starts in the part of your body and it's not checked, it will metastasize to the entire body. Right? And that's what the mark of the beast will do. It will encompass land and sea, and yea, every nation will have a law compelling their people groups to um, disobey God, right? All right, now, H now, he is guilty of blasphemy. A very incriminating evidence, right? He is guilty of blasphemy. Revelation 13 says now, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given to him to continue 42 months. Verse 6 says, and he opened his mouth and blaspheme against God and blaspheme his tabernacle and them that dwell. Right? Remember in Daniel chapter 7, the little horn, he spake great word against the Most High. And that word against really means in the place of the Most High. Right? Against the Most High, right? And again, you at this point, now you want to just focus on the word blasphemy. This word is repeated three times for emphasis. So at this time now, you really want to find out how does the Bible define blasphemy? You want to get a biblical definition for how the Bible defines blasphemy because this system is guilty of blasphemy. As a matter of fact, this is a very incriminating piece of evidence that links the leopard-like beast to the Roman Catholic Church. Are you with me? All right now. So here are two texts, go-to texts we always you have, want to have them on the tip of your tongue. These are two go-to texts that you can always go to. John 10, 33 and Mark chapter 2, verse 7. And each one of these texts gives us a different definition. Look at what blasphemy is, right? John 10, 33 says, The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Blasphemy, here it is now, and because that thou being a man, makest thyself a God. So based on this text, any man that claims to be God is blasphemy, is blaspheming, and he commits, and he commits blasphemy. One more text, Mark chapter 2, verse 7 says, 
why doth this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God? So here we see another. Remember, Bible unlocks Bible. We covered this, right? The Bible should be its own interpreter. You want to drive these points back home, right? So here we see now any man who can say they forgive sins, right? Right? Pardon, absolute, absolve. They're guilty of blasphemy. So when the Bible says the leopard like beast is guilty of blasphemy, it is a man who claims to forgive sins, right? And a man who claims to be God. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Upon the leopard beast's head was written the word blasphemy. All right, now, so let's now read what blasphemy, here are some statements from the Catholic Church. Again, we're using their own arguments against them, right? Their own thing, right? This one says, now, there is a man on earth that can forgive sins, and that is the priest. The priest stands as a mediator between God and man. This is blasphemy. This is blasphemy, right? Blasphemy. One more, it says, all names in the scriptures which are applied to Christ indicating that he's over the church, are the same applied to the Pope. Friends, this is blasphemy. This is blasphemy. This, and as, Donny, as uh, Johnny Cochran said, as he was making his closing mark, his closing marks towards um, O.J. Simpson's church, uh, trial rather, he had the gloves on. He says, if the, the gloves don't fit, you must acquit. Saints, the gloves fit. The gloves fit, therefore you cannot acquit. This system is the system of whom John spoke of, right? Note now, right? By claiming to be the vicar of Christ on earth and by assuming prerogatives that belongs only to God, he sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4. This is the very same power as a little, ho a little horn, of Daniel 7, 24, 25, the papacy is guilty of blasphemy because, because her priests claim to forgive sins and her popes claim to be Christ. Again, friends, let them know this is the facts. This beast of Revelation 13, the leopard-like beast of whose mark we are told not to receive, this finds its fulfillment, brothers and sisters, right, in the Catholic Church. All right, let me see some comments coming in. All right, um, blank says, and God cannot use the pastors who go to, you're right. You know, God is calling us out of Babylon. E.A. Sutherland said, um, we call our brothers and sisters out of Babylon, and yet you send your children down there to be educated, right? Full stop, right? So definitely, they have, they have been intoxicated by the wine of Babylon, right? All right. Blank again said, um, God loves the Pope and all the world wander after the beast. Right? It does. Right? Ellen G. White in Greek controversy says, Rome never changes. And that's a good point. Very good point, Blank. You know, you want to emphasize this. The leopard, ja, um, in Jeremiah says, can a leopard change her spot or can an Ethiopian her skin? Right? I can't find, I put a text to, to, to my mind. You can put it in the chat group. But emphasize this fact that the leopard light beast does not change. It's not going to change. Right? It's not going to change, right? Now, one more point we want to look at now as we wind down. It wars with and overcome the saints. Now, who is a saint? These are people who are keeping the commandments of God. Revelation 13, 7 says, And it was given unto him to make war, not with everybody, with the saints. And so in the last days, the only group of people this beast will make war with are the saints, not the sinners, Right? And to overcome them. And power was given over him all kindreds, tongues, and nation. Friends, now this happened be prior to Bertie or taking the Pope captive. And again, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9, what does Solomon say? History repeats itself. The thing that hath been is that which shall be. And again, the same power will one day war against the saints. And yea, he will overcome the saints. He will overcome them. Right? Right? All right. Now, and again, let's look at how the Catholic Church has, has had her hands bloody. 
Um, remember, th the leopard-like beast is that he, his feet, is the feet of a bear, meaning that this system is very cruel and despotic. Right? Here's a quote. The Public e Ecclesiastical Law, Volume 2, 142 says, The church, which is the Catholic Church, has persecuted only a novice in church history will deny that. In other words, only a knucklehead will deny that. A novice, a charlatan will deny that, right? They say the church may by divine right confiscate the property of heretics, imprison their persons, condemn to the flame. In our age, the right to inflict the severest penalties, even death, belongs to the church. There is no graver offense than heresy, therefore it must be rooted out. Listen, get John Fox Book of Martyrs. Have that book with you as you're teaching. Encourage them to get the book John Fox's Book of Martyrs and see how the Catholic Church has persecuted uh, uh, the people of God during this time frame, right? The papacy did persecute, destroying millions of saints during the Dark Ages. What were the Dark Ages? From 538 to 1798. Friends, again, I want to say, right, um, that, that friends, you, you got to emphasize this. And again, for us, because we've heard it so long, it becomes commonplace. But for them, these people don't know these things. As a matter of fact, I would dare say many of our church members don't even know these things. All right? Now, it would rule for 40 and 2 months. So it has a time frame, right? Revelation 13, 5 says, right? There was given unto him, Nathan, a mouth speaking great things, blasphemies, power was given to continue for eternity. No, for 40 and 2 months. Now, it's amazing that, let me open it up, let me, let me open everything up, right? That we find the same time frame in Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel 7, 25, the little horn would rule for time, times divided into times. Time is 360, time 720, time 180. Why don't we use 365 days in a year? It's because we're going after the, Jew, the, 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 the Jewish calendar, not the Gregorian uh, the Gregorian calendar, right? When you add that, you get 1260. 42 months times 30, you get 1260 years. Friends, note, the beast was to rule for 40 or 2 months, or for 1260 days or years. The little, uh, this again corresponds to the little horn of Daniel chapter 7, verse 24, 25, from 538 to 1798 B.C. All right? All right, um, Rick says he's called the son of perdition Judas. The papacy have the same characteristics. You're, you're, you're so true, you know. In, uh, when we do, we have several crusade series that we do. And when we look at the truth, not in the in the truth, when we teach the Antichrist, we do call it the son of perdition. And you're right, the only other person, Rick, that in the Bible that the title son of perdition is, a, is, is applied to was Judas, and there are a lot of similarities between Judas and the Catholic Church, right? Right, a lot, a lot of similarities, right? All right, this is some great controversy, right? Another historical book that we use, right? We're told the 40 and 2 months are the same as the times, times and divide not times, right? Three years and a half, or 1260 days of Daniel chapter 7. The time during which the papal power was to oppress God's people. This period was, as stated in the preceding chapter, began with the supremacy of the papacy in 538 and terminated in 1798. At this time, the Pope was made captive by the French army. The papal power receives deadly wound and the prediction was fulfilled. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must also be killed with the sword. Friends, again, we see the same time frame. There's, there's no way you can apply this to some, to some mystical, mythical man to appear on the scene right after the rapture takes place. Right? No, all right. And the, the final point now, the final point that we want to highlight about the, the leopard-like beast and this is found in, in verse number eight, in, in verse 18. It has a mysterious number 666. Right? 
So we want to read that, right? Revelation 13, 18 says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man. His number is 600, three score, and six. And again, note this is what now. The verse says, it is a number of a man, not the mark of the beast. So 666 is not the mark of the beast, right? And Revelation 15, 2 says it refers to the number of the name. What man do you think of when you think of the papacy? Naturally, we think of the Pope. What is the official name? Here is a Catholic quote. The title of the Pope of Rome is Vicarus Filii Dei, which is in Latin, right? As the, in English mean Vicar of the Son of God. Who is the vicar of Christ on earth? Jesus says in John 10, If I go, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you another comforter. That, well, that means the paracletos of the same kind, right? The Holy Spirit, Nathan, is Christ's representative on earth, not the Catholic Church, right? As a matter of fact, between you and me, Ellen White calls the Catholic Church the Pope, Satan's right-hand man. Yes, you'll find that in Bible Echo. But don't tell him I said that, right? Because this is just for us, right? All right now, right? All right, so Malachi Martin in the keys of his blood uses the same title for the Pope on page 114. That's a powerful book, Malachi Martin, written in Malachi Martin is the next Jesuit devoted Roman Catholic. And he wrote that book in honor of Pope John Paul II. And then the caption says, willing or not, ready or not, the new world order is coming. And he talks about three world powers in that book. Russia, which is no more, um, the West, which is America, and the Roman Catholic Church, right? And so we've inserted a chart, as you can add them up, the letters in, in, in Roman numeral. V is 500, I is 1, C, 100, a C note, A, 0, R, 0, I, 1, right? U, 5, S, O, that's 112. Filii, right? F is 0 again, 1. I is 1, L is 50, L is 1, or either I is 1, I is 1, that's 53. And then D is 500, E, 0, uh, 1, uh, 1, I is 1, 501, you get it, 66. Now, again, I know they may go online and type it in and you'll get, a lot of people have come up with some bizarre definitions of what it is. Um, some say you 666, Ellen White's name. Ronald Reagan, and but say, listen, that's not what that's not who they're talking to. This is a referring to the man and the man that governs the system, right? All right. A footnote of Revelation 13, 18 in the same Dawi version of the Bible says, the numerical letters of his name shall make up his number. Notice the chart on the right, we've covered that, that shows you the numerical numbers. You have this to resort back to, right? All right, the beast with the mark. So the beast with the mark is the papacy. And that's all this lesson is trying to establish. The beast of whose mark we're told not to receive, in Revelation 13, is the Roman Catholic Church. No other power in the history could possibly fit these 11 divine descriptive points. None. There's no other religious political power on the face of the earth that fits identically with these 11 points. And there were others that we could have highlighted and brought out, but just for time's sake, we've only did 11, right? Now we know, now we know what, uh, now we know, sorry, now that we have a positively identified the beast, we can discover her mark, her symbol, and her authority, right? Remember, brothers and sisters, the man would naturally be the head of the papacy or the pope, leading the title, the vicar of the Son of God. In Latin, we find vicarus filii di, right? And so once we've established um, what the beast is or who the beast is, it is now easy for us to identify what the mark of the beast is. And so, what's the objective? Your objective is to prove that the leopard beast of Revelation 13 is the Roman Catholic Church and is the same 
as the little horn in Daniel chapter 7, right? Um, verse 8 and verse 25. That's the objective of this evening's lesson. And again, you probably won't cover this in one session or one setting, even one season. But again, you don't have a quotum. Um, friends, again, we're trying to really change the narrative. Um, you know, it's no good to have me, you come and sit down and, and hear me preach and teach and you're just entertained. No, we want to create a paradigm shift in our churches where we are empowering more of our members to go out and conduct what Ellen White call Bible readings or give Bible study. Every member of the church, and friends, it is, it is, it is a sad reality that it is possible for you to be a member in the Seventh-day Adventist church in quote-unquote good and regular standing and not give a Bible study. You know, in ancient times, um, when in Genesis 3.15, when that, that promise was given, that, uh, that, that uh, the Messiah child shall be born. Every woman hoped that their womb would carry the Messiah. And that's why in ancient times, when ladies didn't have children, it was almost a crime. And they would plead to God, Lord, will I die childless? They plead and they prayed for God to open up their womb so they could have a child, yea, even a male child. Paul likens giving birth to winning new converts. Paul says, I, I travail in birth. I labor with you in birth. Meaning the time that he took to win converts from Judaism to Christianity or from heathenism to Christianity. And friends, will we, will, will we die childless? Will we really die childless? Will we be members in God's remnant church and have never, through the grace of God and through your personal efforts, lead a soul to Jesus? Are you going to die a childless? I pray not. And listen, friends, half of the year is almost done, right? And looking back, have you been instrumental? Have I been instrumental in actually leading a person out of darkness into light? out of Babylon, into God's remnant church, into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And so, friends, that is why, that, that is why we sought to put forth these, um, these lessons. Again, they're not fanciful. We don't have color like amazing facts because we, we is poor, you know what I'm saying? But again, like David, like, like David, you know, hey, use your sling, you know what I'm saying? As long as we get the job done, that's um, the whole objective. So you can either use these. The thing that makes these a game changer, as I've said, number one, you have the lessons. We go through the study guide. We go through the lessons, right? So we try to go through the questions, expound upon the concepts. So as you, as you begin to administer these things, you are not left in the dark. And only, we also give you um, the PowerPoints. Not very rarely, um, PowerPoints are given away. These PowerPoints are free. We give them away. We're not selling them. We want this is our contribution to the global initiative in making discipleship, right? And you also have your master guide. You have your master guide. You can go back and you also have the student guide. Friends, I'm telling you something. I was talking to a friend of mine today. He's outside the country. And we were just, you know, we were just thinking, you know, how we can really create a paradigm shift in our churches and i said man this is the way to go if you can use your church as a training ground to get the members taught fully taught fully settled and i tell folks this you know um there are two things we should be preparing for right now every seventh adventist should be preparing for this two things number one be preparing for either resurrection or preparing for translation that's it Either resurrection or translation. And guess what? Anyone, the good Lord, through his providence, allow us to fall in, a part of our preparation is giving Bible studies. You know, in, in, um, in early writings, in Gospel Workers, Ellen White tells a story about a man who was trying to make his way from one point to another point in midwinter. So he left the house, and it was, it was blistering winter, man. You can hear bone crushing. You could hear the winds howling and knee-deep of snow. 
And he, as he was making his way to his safe haven, he, he saw a fellow traveler. And this, and this traveler was caught in the blizzard and about to die. His vital force was slipping away and he began to cry for help. Please help me. The man was making his way to the, the safe haven. And when he heard the cries, his sympathy was stirred. And so he picked the man up who was almost frozen, put him on his back, and they drafted, I'm using a word, just drafted the, 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 the snow. And, you know, it was a struggle for him. It was a struggle. And by the grace of God, both men made it to the safe haven. And it dawned on the man in saving his neighbor, he had saved himself. Because as he lifted that man up now, the weight was so heavy, the body began to exhort more energy and it produced a heat. And so he was warmed on his way to the safe haven. Friends, I'm telling you, a part of us being prepared for either resurrection, which is a special resurrection I'm talking about now, not the first, the special for those who die in faith under the third angel's message, right? Either for resurrection or for translation, part of our preparation is seeking to give Bible studies. Amongst other things now. Friends, you will not be saving God's kingdom, not working in God's vineyard. Giving Bible study. And some, some, some may say, not, I can't do it. Yes, you can. If God can use a rooster and he can use a donkey, listen, he can use you. Right? Right? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and he shall find. All right? So we're back on track by the grace of God. Now, it's kind of dark. I'm looking, I'm seeing online. But by the grace of God, we're going to get this camera. And these are some high Nikon cameras, you know. So, they, so, you know what I mean? This is a new one we got. So, we're going to try to get it um, a sync so we can get it more light, right? All right. Let me see what, um, let me see what's, what's treading out there. And excuse. Okay. All right. Um, nice. NYC Flick says, so where does it come in with the buying and selling? Will people be allowed if they're not Catholic? Well, Bear in mind, when the mark of the beast comes in, um, all those who receive it, which the mark will be urged upon every group, they will have temporary state favor. They can buy and sell, and life will continue for them only for a season, right? A season, right? So definitely those who receive the mark of the beast uh, will have the privileges. Those who don't, you know, There'll be, you know, restrictions placed upon them, buying and selling. That's why, friends, you know, again, I don't know how, how serious you take country living. Um, but, saints, listen, this, this, is, this is the solution for when we can't buy and sell during the, the market of beast crisis. Because if you can't buy and sell, what are you going to eat? You're going to have to learn to farm, and now is the time. We, we, you know, we should already have a piece of land in the country, and, you know, you, you, you prayerfully make your move. And don't be telling folks where you're going because they will try to discourage you. Oh, well, you're going to them bush there far. And they're not going anywhere, right? But now is the time to prepare. Even if you can't move there now, get it built. House is not built in one day. And let me tell you something. I've planted some fruit trees and then the thing is going to grow in one day. It takes you almost a year to get one pineapple or a pineapple. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I can't work with the pine during the buying, buying and selling crisis. It takes too long to, 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 to bring forth its fruit, right? But mango trees, I tell folks this, you know, when we were building, when we first thing I did, once we found our property, I made sure I fenced in my farm. I gotten some bag wire, and the guy who ran the bag wire, cow wires, didn't run them too close, so the ghosts were coming in. And I planted over 100 fruit trees. Right? And the goats were yamming them down. So I had to put, reinforce that with, with a chain link. So we caught it early. And so we, we started to plant, we started planting a huge, huge farm, huge garden, as the house was being, was being built. And so by the time, you know, when you build in Jamaica, boy, you are, you're really on a four year plan. <laughs> but four, five, six year plan, right? But by the grace of God, by the time the house was finished, the fruit trees had matured. And, you know, we got fruits galore. Down there, man, we, we, I had so much fruit. I didn't know what to do with it, man. I was eating mangoes, boy. Didn't even wash them. Organic. Multiple mango trees, plum trees, maca breadfruit. I don't know. Listen, lychee. 
We, so, but my point is, now is the time to prepare, you know, seek God in prayer. Get the book Country Living and ask God to lead you. And I believe that he will lead you. Now, again, some, some going to be refugees. That's reality. Some folks can't even buy and sell right now <laughs> in the buying and sell season, right? They live in hand to mouth, right? And so those who've gone to prepare, I believe that God will use them as a safe haven. Even though now I build the ark, others could have come on board the ark, the refugee, but they chose not to, right? But again, friends, don't let these things overwhelm you. Um, Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You keep your hand in the master's hand. And remember, when the Queen Elizabeth um, asked a merchant to go to Scotland to take care of her business, um, the merchant said to the queen, Queen, if I take care of your business, um, my business will spoil. The queen said, no, you take care of my business and I will see to your business. Friends, if we take care of God's business, let me tell you something. God will take care of you and your business, right? All right. All right. Now, remember saying this is this is lesson number 27. So you'll be receiving a whole lot of PowerPoints, right? For those who want the PowerPoints. Now, let me say this. Once they are sent out, because they are so, here's a, here's a, they, well, because they are so huge, we do use a thing called we transfer and we load all of them. And I tell folks this, if you're not going to use them, don't even ask for them because it, we do have to sit down and it takes T-I-M-E to do this. Now, once you make the request and you get it, you know, remember within three or four days, if you don't download it, it goes away. So folks have been asking, uh, you ask for it, we send, we're not going to keep on sending it. So if we, we send it to you, you need to make sure you download it and, and, and get ready to work. Right? But reach out to us. We will get lessons one, the whole thing we sent out to you. And we encourage you guys, download the videos. Go on YouTube, download the videos or the audios, sync them to your device so you can have them because, again, the videos and the audios does help. Is the screen is still there? Let's switch me over, Mark. Right? All right. It does help um, in um, you get grasping the concepts um, and being able to go and teach, right? All right. Um, the email address, okay, let me see. All right, all right. PowerPoints again. Yeah, Rick. Well, we, we don't make those available, but the Dora Hope. But we, we do make these available. This is just as good as the Dora Hope. The thing with the Dora Hope because it's copyrighted, and that's, that's something I, I use as I travel. That's why we don't really make it available. Um, but again, this one is just as effective, and it can be used in a crusade setting if you have that skill to be able to hold and, con and, and conduct one, right? All right. Um, all right, saints, again, we're, we're back on track by the grace of God. We, wanna, we do want to thank Brother Loban um, for really helping us out, you know, um, in getting the equipment back up. Again, we had challenges. The mics weren't working. Everything was freezing. We sent off the computer to get repaired, and it, it took them forever. And, but we thank God we're back here again. Now, we're on Lesson 27. We don't want to go past probably 30, 32, so 33 the max, 34 the max, right? We would, have, we would have brought this lesson to its close, right? But again, we do plan to use the Sunday Night Live again for evangelism. So again, you know, let us know what you're thinking, what we could do to be of a greater benefit, benefit to you, some subjects you may want us to cover, and again, we are keeping it evangelistic, right? We're not going to talk about no shaking and no, and and you know, no conspiracies. We're dealing with, we're dealing with a platform where we can empower you to go and teach. That's what this platform is for. Nothing else, right? To really seeking to make disciples. Again, friends, we thank you. Just an update for all those who don't know. Sister Baker has come out of the ICU. ICU. Um, she is. Um, in rehab, and so we thank God for that. And Sister Vivine is also 
getting discharged pretty soon. These are core members of our of our of our mission. They were having Wellington right again. Um, again, just share the link. I know this 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 platform should be a blessing to every Seventh Day Adventist because we believe that you have the ability. He gave gifts to 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 do what we're doing to take this in your home in your little space right and share it. And the quickest way to learn the message, I tell folks, is to start teaching it. You know, going to seminars are good, but again, if you want to learn how to swim, by and by, you're going to have to really get in the water, right? So we've exhausted our time. Again, going forward, we won't be this long because we had a little prelim. But we thank you. God bless you. Um, we're going to, we just thank everyone. Let me just give a shout out um, again, right? All those who are online, Sister Scott. Xavier, um, Boston, Bryant, Sister Kerry, Rogers, K. Godwin, Blank, right, Sister Knott, right, Nathan, all those who are viewing on, on, on Facebook, um, blessings to you, we thank we're back live, so look for us, look forward to see us this time frame on Sundays, God willing, and also we are resuming back our uh, trailblazers, now the trailblazers is almost finished. Um, we're going to be finishing Anna Knight, and then we may cover Ellen White, and then that will be the end of the Trailblazer. But we do have some other powerful series that we will be launching at our Wednesday night service. So again, log on, subscribe, stay tuned, pray for us while we pray for you. Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, Lord, we're so thankful and grateful that you have called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. We thank you, Almighty God, that you have given to this church uh, such a wonderful message, Lord, a life-changing message, a message of life and death to be given to the world. And for so long, we have sat down on this message, Lord. And the time has now come for us to arise and to shine, right? And we are asking, O oh God, that you will do for us that which you did for Philip. Philip was one of the, one of the most slowest disciples he didn't grasp things as readily as the other. But we are told that when the, when the Holy Ghost came upon him, Philip was made a teacher after the divine order. So we are without excuse, Lord. We plead for the Holy Spirit. We plead for the early and the latter rain, Lord, to fill our hearts, fill our lives, and give us all victory over sin, dear Lord. Online tonight are multiple peoples. Many more will watch. You know their situation, Lord. May you apply your, apply your healing grace towards them. And we pray that as we seek to save others, ourselves will not be a castaway. These mercies we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, saints of the living God, we thank you again for allowing us to minister to you um, at this time. Continue to pray. Pray for the church. Again, we've said a lot is taking place in the church now, friends. And remember... The church may appear as it's about to fall, but it does not. It remains, we are told, while the sinners in Zion are sifted out. Keep on praying for our church, praying for our leaders, that, 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 that we will get back to primitive godliness and not neo-Pentecostalism, right? As of always, I say, saints, behold the eye forward.